Hello, and welcome to Lore Bites. Today, we'll be answering the questions, who are the Death Lords? What is it they want? And what are they? So, we're going to start off with what are the Death Lords? The Death Lords are the ghosts of Solars slain during the usurpation. They're angry, they're lost, and they were attracted to the underworld, where they set about conquering it. And as they conquered the underworld, the Neverborn took notice of them and transformed them into their ultimate weapons. They are a secret. While nine of their names are known, four of them are not. And they are the masters of the dead. So not only are they the servants of the dead titans, but ghosts, the hungry walking corpses, and all manner of vile abomination from the underworld recognizes them as their master. They are very similar to the Nazgul of the Lord of the Rings books. So, who are the Death Lords? As I said, nine of them have their names known. Those nine are the Bishop of Chaldansi Thurumbal. He's the religious leader of all the cults of ancestor worship. He is the one who started this. The Badavista Anointed of Dark Water, the Pirate Lord of Skullthrone Island in the West, the Dowager of the Irreverent Vulgate in Unrent Veils. Basically, she is a very scary woman who has a child-rearing fetish. Then there's I and Seven Despairs. Much is known about him, but a lot is still hidden in mystery. The first and forsaken lion. He is the ultimate general of all death lords. The supreme commander. While many death lords do lead armies, none do so in a way that even begins to match the military might of the lion. And then there's the lover clad in raiment of tears. If you ever wanted to find a party girl, it would be the lover. She lives in a tower. Well, lives is a bit of a stretch. But that tower is in a constant state of ecstasy between the living and the ghostly. Their eternal parties move on until living lovers perish from old age, exhaustion, dehydration. Then we have the Mask of Winters. The Mask is the supreme inventor among all Death Lords. It is he who came up with the idea of fusing magical properties into corpses to create walking corpse weapons known as necrotech. And then we are met with the Princess Magnificent with lips of coral and robes of black feathers. She was once a mighty mover and shaker among the Death Lords until she made a grave mistake. And at that mistake, she was able to be snapped up by the first and forsaken lion. Although recognized as a death lord, all of her followers have been subsumed by the lion. And she is now his follower. And now we come to the walker in darkness. A particularly scary individual who 
is again a more hidden, withdrawn figure. So, now that we've covered just who they are and what they are, what is it that the Death Lords seek? What do they want? Well, the answer to that is fairly frightening. The Death Lords want one simple thing. They want to destroy the world of creation. They want to end the permanent world. And they will seek to do it through whatever means they have available to them except one. Teamwork. The Death Lords never work together. And we see this on multiple occasions, but never have we seen it play out like we have since the end of the Shogunate era, when the Dowager unleashed the Great Contagion that nearly destroyed the world. When that plague hit the land, nine-tenths of the population of the world died. It was the Death Lord's greatest achievement, and it was going to plunge creation straight into the underworld. But something happened. The first and forsaken lion could not allow the Dowager her victory, and so he opened the gates of the world and let the Fair Folk in. The Fair Folk would have not just destroyed the world, they would have unmade it. A particular plucky dragon-blooded officer braved impossible odds, turned the world's super weapons against the Fair Folk and simultaneously managed to burn the pestilence out of the world. This provides us with a very interesting situation. The lion was punished for this, and his ghostly armor, his soul steel armor, was burned to his body, searing his ghostly flesh, and forever trapping and imprisoning him within his armor. But why? Why did the lion not allow this to happen? Why couldn't he be happy with his comrade's victory? For you potential storytellers out there, I ask that question. Why? Once you answer that question within your game, you may find that you have a whole new hook on which to hang a plot. And so, this has been Lore Bites, and we thank you for listening. And just remember, in the world of Exalted, there are creatures of darkness, and that darkness is where we find the greatest source of hope.